Welcome to this short application of substitution and income effects. Uh, before watching this one, you should watch the previous video in the playlist that talks about the theory uh, relating to substitution and income effects. What we're going to do here is a uh, very specific skill focusing on applying that theory to do some calculations. So as a starting point, we have a nice diagram here. It looks a lot like the one in the previous video. We have good x, sorry, good x here and good y. We can see that on our initial budget constraint, we could afford either five units of X or 10 units of Y or some combination. We see that the optimal point here labeled A is where we buy two units of good X and six units of good Y. And then we have some other points labeled um, point C here. Forgot to show that it's the optimal point, but that's what I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna show that the MRS equals price ratio at point C and we're on that indifference curve I just drew in and uh, I've labeled point B. Point B is going to be representing what I would do if I was stuck on the same indifference curve as A, right, because you can see that they are both on this common indifference curve, but if the price ratio had changed such that it matched the, the new price ratio, like the one at C. So I'll draw in, you know, a part, a part of a budget constraint showing that it has that different slope, and I've, I've tried to make that as close to the slope at C as possible. Okay, and we can see at point B we'd be buying five units of good X and three units of good Y, and at point C we're buying a lot of good X, seven units of good X, and four units of good Y. So what we're going to do is calculate the, the total effect, the change from A to C. So the price of X went down, that caused us to switch from consuming bundle A to bundle C, so that has a total effect. Whenever we talk about these effects, they're really two effects. They're an effect on X and an effect on Y, right? Because as we move from A to C, we can see X changes from two to seven. So we could say the total effect is positive five, but Y falls from six to four. So the Y total effect is negative two. And that's why I think this table is helpful to organize. You're gonna see these a lot in section and on the problem sets where you'll fill in your substitution and income effects the table makes it clear that there's going to be a substitution effect for each of y and x, the same for income effects, and then the sum of those two will add up to give us our total effect. So now we can go and find our substitution effects. We know the substitution effect, like we said in the last video, uh, visually it's the change where you stay on the same indifference curve, so you don't actually get extra utility. Um, but you pick a point with reflecting the new price ratio. So essentially you're, you're changing from one bundle to another bundle uh, at two points where the MRS are different, where, the, where the, sub, the rate of substitution is different, and that's where it gets the name substitution effect. So here those two points are from A to B, so our substitution effect is the movement from A to B. That represents consuming three extra units of X and reducing consumption of Y by three units um, and this is actually something that's always going to be true. You're always going to see one substitution effect positive, one substitution effect negative. They have to go in opposite directions. If a price doesn't change, if the only thing that changes is income, then you wouldn't have a substitution effect. They'd both be zero and you'd only have income effects. But whenever you see one positive, the other's going to be negative. They don't have to be exact opposites like here where one is plus three, one's minus three. That's just a coincidence. So then if our total effect is just sum of substitution and income effect. We really don't need to look at the graph to figure out our income effects. We can calculate that for x, if the sum of se and ie is going to be 5, then the ie must be plus 2. Uh, but just to be sure, let's look at the graph and verify that that's right. So our income effect is basically the change we get from having um, more utility, from moving from b to c. And we can see that for x, that's moving from 5 to 7, so that is indeed plus 2. Uh, and then we can look on the graph. The movement from b to c for y is a plus 1. So the income effects for both were positive, uh, whereas the substitution effect was positive for x and negative for y. And we can see all of our numbers add up in the table. 3 plus 2 is 5. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So we're done. So this is basically how you read one of these graphs. If you're given a graph like here, you can make a table. If you're given explicit numbers, you can fill in that table with explicit numbers. 
Uh, if you're not given numbers, you can at least say, well, we can see that the x increased when we moved from a to b, so that's positive. y decreased, so that would be negative. Uh, a lot of the time, though, what you'll, what you'll have in problems is you'll be given information in a, like a verbal description, like a word problem, then you'll have to fill in a table, and then once you have a table like this, you can draw in a picture to match that. So it turns out that even though the graphs are probably uh, the, the hardest thing to work with here, usually most of the work is going to be done with the tables and with, with verbal descriptions, and then you'll just take that information and convert it into a picture. So hopefully that was helpful. If not, uh, as I said in the last video, you're probably going to have to review both of these and uh, the textbook material in Chapter 21 a few times before things click. So be sure to ask questions in office hours and by email and uh, whatnot, whatever it takes to get this material to make sense to you.